It's July 1st. Some folks call it Dominion Day, which is the legal name for Canada, the Dominion of Canada. That's too old fashioned and it evokes something majestic, maybe even holy. So it's being changed to Canada Day, just like our flag was changed to the Pearson pennant to have the right Liberal Party colors. But that was a different era. Pearson may have been a globalist, but I think he did love Canada. Pierre Trudeau, who, like Jean Chrétien, came from Pearson's government, was a communist and a globalist, but I think he loved Canada in addition to loving China and the Soviet Union and Cuba. I think Trudeau, at the least, you know, stood up for Canada. He fought against Quebec separatism. He fought against the United States. Maybe those were negative fights rather than being positively pro-Canada. But I just can't imagine that Pierre Trudeau or Jean Chrétien would be as hostile to the spirit of Canada as... Trudeau's dullard son, Trudeau, has become Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau uh, ordered the flag to be at half-mast on Parliament Hill today for Canada Day. Was it out of solidarity with the half-dozen-plus churches that have been torched in the last week, a national crime wave of hate crimes and arson? I'm kidding, of course not. He hasn't even said a word about it. The flag is at half-mast not because of this Kristallnacht of churches, but because of unmarked graves at various former Indian residential schools in Canada, including some that his father, Pierre Trudeau, would have presided over when he was prime minister. Those are unmarked graves, but they're not mass graves. They're graves of children who died across the decades at these boarding schools, these residential schools. According to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, half of these kids died from tuberculosis. A hundred years ago, life expectancy was much lower than it is now. Hygiene, food, health, medicine was poor, and these schools did not have proper resources. It was not good at all. But this is not 2021 news. The Truth and Reconciliation Committee full report went into the details of the deaths, the deaths of these schools at great length when they published their report in 2015. So why the cancellation of Canadian symbols now, six years later? Stephen Harper gave a formal apology for government's role. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to offer an apology to former students of Indian residential schools. The treatment of children in Indian residential schools is a sad chapter in our history. Trudeau never to be outdone for apologizing for someone else's sins. I've never actually seen Trudeau apologize for himself. Trudeau gave his apology too. Today... I humbly stand before you to offer a long overdue apology to the former students of the Lockwood School in Cartwright, the Makovic Boarding School, the Nain Boarding School, the St. Anthony Orphanage and Boarding School, and the Yale School in Newfoundland and Labrador on behalf of the Government of Canada and all Canadians. So, Truth and Reconciliation commissioned out in 2015. Apologies from Harper and Trudeau. So why is the flag being lowered today? Why are Canada Day celebrations being cancelled across the country? Why are statues of any sort and all sorts being defaced or taken down? Not just Sir John A. Macdonald. We're long past that. But really anyone. All statues from earlier eras that weren't woke enough. Uh, weirdly, the Norman Bethune statue, you know, that collaborator with the Chinese communists, it's not taken down. Same with Tommy Douglas and his statue. There's a lot to quarrel with with Tommy Douglas. He was for eugenics back when the Nazis were making that vogue. He wrote his university thesis on sterilizing people who were subhuman and he wasn't too woke on gays. If ever we needed in this country to adopt a new attitude to homosexuality, this is the time. Uh, instead of treating it as a crime and driving it underground, we ought to recognize it for what it is. It's a, it's a mental illness. It's a psychiatric condition which ought to be treated sympathetically, which ought to be treated by psychiatrists and social workers. And, of course, there's Pierre Trudeau, the master of these residential schools. Why aren't his Trudeau statues being taken down? I wonder why those leftist icons aren't being smashed. I suspect it's because conservatives generally don't try to smash history. 
conserve history, maybe learn from it, but smash it? Mm, doesn't sound conservative. There's no perfect country in the world, by the way. I think I criticize Canada more than most people do. But the alternative to Canada isn't some fantasy utopia. It doesn't exist. It's, it's one of the 200 other countries in the world. What's better? Which place is better? I like a lot of things about America, by the way. But if you're worried about residential schools and the treatment of Indians on reserve, I don't think you'll prefer America's history with Aboriginal people. They, they have a whole history called the Indian Wars. You might want to learn about that. This is an actual mass grave at Wounded Knee in South Dakota. Don't read that story if you're hard of, if you have a soft constitution. I should tell you, Aboriginal people haven't fared much better anywhere in the Americas either. It's, if it's a slave history you're worried about, interested in, concerned about, know that Canada banned the slave trade well over 200 years ago. We were part of the British Empire that literally sent Navy ships to intercept and free slave ships for half a century, rescuing countless thousands. Tell me a continent that hasn't had slavery, going back to the beginning of recorded history from Egypt to China to Africa to Rome to Greece to the Mongols. There was quite a bit of slavery in the Americas before the arrival of Columbus, I might add. So I don't think it's enough to tear down or to hate. Show me your alternative. Show me a perfect society. There is no such place. Utopia is a word that literally means no place. It's an impossible state of perfection. Dystopia. Now that's easier to find, isn't it? That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.